Hey everybody, this is DM Mike, and this is the uh, next campaign die for Rise of Tiamat. This is going to be a quick one, guys. Uh, this was a, this is the wrap-up of a side adventure, a side quest for Lucius, um, our paladin who rescued his father from the clutches of the cult. And it, all this, this encounter occurred in a very small space. Let's go ahead and put it up here. There's, here's the map. This is the forge, or the throne room, the main area of the forge that powers the entire thing. The cult was creating a massive amount of weapons in a short amount of time using automatons and using this humongous forge that were able to crank out this stuff. Well, they had captured his father. They wanted information from his father, but he wasn't giving him up, so he was, he was a prisoner. He was being tortured. They were trying to get this secret knowledge from him, but could not do it. Well, in walked the characters, and they had a just a very long knockout drag knockdown so knockdown drag out kind of fight they were butting heads this was an equally matched fight and it was you know tank versus tank and it was a long fight i'm not gonna lie i i think as a dm kind of lost control of pacing in a willful kind of way a very, very i just kind of washed my hands of it and let everything unfold the way it was going to unfold good or bad it's just a decision i made and so it turned out to be a good five and a half hour combat scenario oh my god which is not what i anticipated not what i thought was going to happen i don't think my players were thinking they were going to be fighting for five hours but i think because everybody was so evenly matched and we had fully decked out paladins dark paladins on top of that with unique abilities it was rough it was a hard encounter and here's the thing i think that kind of wrecked in a good way, wrecked the pacing uh, of this adventure or this this session was conditions. Everybody had spells and conditions that were piling and stacking on top of one another. I had my own spells and different things that were stacking on top of one another. So every round, every turn within that round was pretty complex. Because look, it was only six for six. This is, this is sign language. Six for six, that's all it was. And it, I did not flood the battlefield with a lot of enemies. It was just, everybody was evenly matched. Bingo! Now I'm not gonna get into particulars of everything that happened. I can tell you, Jalen, one of the NPCs died three times. She dropped to the floor. The third time she actually was killed. Yithril, in my opinion, the past two sessions, led the way again. I think if Yithriel, okay, Yithriel actually changed Jalen on her last ditch effort into a T-Rex. And we had to do the math on this. We had Thimbraeus, the player who plays Thimbraeus, uh, he had to do the physics. Like we had to break out the math if a T-Rex could even walk around this environment without crushing it, destroying the, the metal and the sheets below him that were containing all this lava and whatnot. We had to break out the math on that. Um, so, uh, when she changed into this T-Rex, that actually kind of absorbed a lot of damage. It took the attention of half the group, so three of the Crimson Six, just to deal with this T-Rex as everything else was going on, right? So that was the big thing. We had a T-Rex uh, come in. Uh, we had one moment where one of the characters leapt off one of the pipings up in, on top of the map and... Um, had to kind of ran at an arc and we had to do some math on that and how that worked. It was a great moment, uh, but spoiled at the end because she failed her athletics check and, and bounced off the enemy she was trying to <laughs> grapple. It was a night of mathematics. It was a night of conditions. Uh, it was a night of stalemates. Um, it was a night of people being equally matched. And it kind of kept me up that night. I remember being, after we wrapped it up, I was thinking to myself, God, you know, what could I have done? I mean, look, as a DM, we could have said, well, I could have dropped a couple of nights earlier. I could have fudged here, you know, just to get the pacing, you know, a little bit faster. Because I could tell some people were getting kind of tired at the end. But I kind of felt like that night, it needed to unfold the way it was going to unfold. And I wasn't going to pull any punches. If it took long, it took long. Uh, the cult was not going to give up such a valuable asset, you know, easily. They weren't going to do that. They put the Crimson Six there because they were powerful and it would take time and a lot of effort to bring them down. As a DM, I was struggling with all that stuff and pacing the editing, you know, and just keeping that controlled, but I had to let it go. But in the end, they defeated the Crimson Six. Now, here's what I did. This is important, I think, for uh, when you're DM these side quests that whoever this side quest is designed for they need to do the killing blow so at the very end i knew long even before this session started i was like look if elbon who's the leader of the crimson six once he gets down to about halfway he's almost dead he's going to make his move 
and his move was this. We got to a point where Alban was almost dead. He grappled Lucius and teleported him to this map. Uh, this is a map I had set out next to next to the table. It was actually covered. You couldn't even see it. And what happened was Alban transported Lucius to the plains of Avernus, and this is where they had their last final encounter. And, you know, it was cinematic. I tried to make it cinematic. Um, I wanted that final encounter to happen on the plains of Avernus in front of his father, who was chained up. This is the, this is the first time he actually got a look at his father. He had no clue where his father was in the fortress because they hadn't found him. But there he was in these black chains, chained to the black stone obsidian. And suddenly, in front of his father, you know, the father's sitting there, and suddenly his son and this dark paladin are fighting right there in front of him. And, you know, Alban's hope was to kill him right there in the plains of Avernus in front of his father and to break him. And then possibly they would finally get the information they needed. I think Lucius had about 50 hit points. Alban had like 42 or something like that. So both of them were near the end of their lives and they finished that fight right there and uh lucius won by not much really uh but he managed to kill alban so they duked it out in avernus and it was kind of fun the characters the players did not expect that um and here's the thing as a dm it was important to the story that lucius give the killing blow it couldn't be pax it could not be Thimbraeus. It could not be Storm who, who gave the last blow against the pivotal enemy in another character's side quest. It had to be Lucius. So it, to me, yes, it was a setup. It was a setup to have a cinematic ending, which I always like. I thought it would be cool to fight in front of the father and to see who would really win. And three, it kept, really as a DM, it kept everybody's hands off the table. No one else was going to take out Alban. It had to be Lucius. So it was a story call. Um, it was a pacing call by me. And kind of, you know, I, it's important that a character, his backstory, or sorry, his side quest is completed by that character. So anyway, guys, that's it. That's that's the whole thing. It was, you know, a lot of little things happened. I'm not going to go through that five-hour encounter because it was a long time. But it was fun. I mean, it was fun. It was intense. But, you know, towards the end, yes, it waned. Yes, I think people were starting to get a little exhausted. But I think when we transported to Avernus, that kicked up some energy at the table, but it did leave other characters kind of having to mop up and finish. But, you know, that's the way it was going to go. There were still enemies there. There was still the Crimson Six. They were still a threat. They needed to get rid of them while suddenly one of their players disappeared. They don't know where into another realm who was also trying to finish the job as well. It was a mixed bag of things. I don't think it was a bad session. I don't think it was an awesome session. It just created a its own different feel that night. I still haven't found the right adjectives to describe it. One thing to note is I also used Warlord and Champion stats off my monster cards to make them, I kind of mixed them, the hit points and all the abilities. I like, I used everything on those cards for my champions or for my uh, Dark Paladins. So those, those are the stats and different things I'd use. They had a couple other additional powers. I had these little orbs that shot out from the back of one of the Paladins, like flak, like gun flak, like poof, poof, And they kind of went around the field eight little cylinders and they would steal life force from people and take all that life force and give it back to Alban who was the leader right so they would just drain slowly drain people during the encounter uh, as they were trying to fight the Crimson Six so there was a lot of little things going on but it really it was six for six um, and it just just happened to be a combat encounter that went on pretty long right, guys that's it that's all I got for you today we have wrapped up the side quest now we're actually going into a B team which I highly recommend for Rise of Tiamat or any really, maybe even the entire saga of the Tyranny of Dragons. We're going into a B team that's actually going to go into the next chapter, which is chapter seven, I think, which is Zonifal's Tower. Maybe it's chapter six. I mean, if you're running this, you know what I'm talking about. But we decided we'll end here, this crucial moment. They freed the father. They're stuck in a forge, cut away. And now we're going to a bunch of new characters that will be taking up the mantle, they're, they're engaging the cult, and they'll be going into a, the next chapter of Rise of Tiamat. And I think it's going to be a good thing for us. I think it's going to bring some vigor uh, back to the table uh, and, you know, kind of generate some excitement. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I got for you. I'll see you in the next one. Bingo!